Make sure you go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home fragrance, health, and beauty products. This is Crystal, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So it was recently reported um, on Tom Loeffler, which is Golovkin's promoter, on his Twitter account, I believe, that they are headed to Dallas, Texas, scouting for a location for Golovkin's next fight. Very, very interesting news, considering the fact that there's a very good chance that Golovkin won't be facing Canelo in his very next fight. Because Canelo, he wants to fight in September. He doesn't want to fight in May. So if Golovkin is not going to fight Canelo in Texas in his next fight, then who is Tom Loeffler planning on putting Golovkin in the ring with in Texas? Now, we all know there's only one fighter from Texas that is coincidentally Golovkin's mandatory. And that is, of course... Jamal Charlo. Now, obviously, once again, it wouldn't make any sense for Golovkin to go to Texas, have a fight out there when his mandatory is from Texas and not fight Jamal Charlo. It's possible that can happen, but it wouldn't make any sense at all. And in fact, it would probably be a bad look on Golovkin's part unless they were building towards a Jamal Charlo fight. Now, obviously, we all know that Golovkin is going to try to secure the Canelo rematch because that's not as dangerous of a fight as the Jamal Charlo fight would be. We all know that for a fact. Now, for those of you guys who caught the interview that I did with Golovkin's trainer, Abel Sanchez, right after Jamal Charlo knocked out Heelan to secure the number one mandatory spot, if you guys recall, Abel Sanchez, he said, we're not fighting him unless the WBC forces that fight. This is what Abel Sanchez said. And now, since they may not get the Canelo fight in May, this puts more pressure on Team Golovkin to face their mandatory. We all know that in the past, Golovkin, he's faced his mandatories with no hesitation, fighters like Willie Monroe, Dominic Wade, and the list goes on and on. Let's see how long it takes, or if they even take the fight against Jamal Charlo. Boy, it's amazing how a couple years changes the entire landscape at the middleweight division, right? I mean, because it wasn't that long ago that there was really no competition there for Golovkin at 160. I mean, there was a point when there was nothing but dolphins and seals swimming in the ocean with Gennady Golovkin. Now you have nothing but sharks swimming in the ocean with Gennady Golovkin. I mean, things went from SeaWorld to Jaws overnight, it seems like. At least for Gennady Golovkin. The walls are seriously closing in. It's going to be very difficult to justify if Golovkin is not facing Canelo next. It is going to be very difficult for Golovkin to justify him not fighting his mandatory Jamel Charlo or him not giving Danny Jacobs a rematch. And I'm not talking about in his very next fight because, of course, Danny Jacobs he has um, Luis Arias that he has to get past. But I'm talking about in the near future. Fighters like Danny Jacobs, rematch. Uh, Demetrius Andrade, who's now with HBO. And Jamal Charlo, who's Golovkin's mandatory. It is going to be very difficult to justify not facing any of those guys within the next year or so. We'll see what happens. 
You know, um, I talked about this on the radio show this past Sunday, and um, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate. I truly believe that HBO, and when I say HBO, guys, I want you guys to understand, I'm talking about HBO, the network. I'm not talking about just Jim Lampley, you know, or his crew or whatever. I'm talking about HBO, the actual network, because I believe that HBO, they have a little bit, not, not, not a major difference, but they have a little bit of a different agenda than, of course, the extremely racist Jim Lampley does. Because, guys, you know what? We can't sugarcoat this anymore. We have to call a spade a spade. That is what Jim Lampley is. Of course, the racist fans are going to come to his defense because that's what racist fans are supposed to do. Racist fans are supposed to defend racists. But going back to the agenda, distinction, I truly believe that HBO, they're starting to feel, you know what? If we can't beat them, join them. And what that means is, I believe that HBO, they feel if fighters like, even though Andre Ward is retired, but let's just use, let's throw him in the mix for an example. If fighters like Andre Ward, if he continues to win, if he remains undefeated, despite the fact that he's on a coincidental list and the decavs, they despise him. The detractors, they hate his guts. Despite all of that, the fact that fighters like Guillermo Rigo, for as long as he's remained undefeated, compared to uh, Donaire, who he basically you know, made his name off of beating Donaire, fighters on a coincidental list, I think HBO, they're starting to realize Regardless if we don't like them, or regardless if some of the detractors don't like them, these guys keep winning. And at the end of the day, we all know there was one fighter that was on the coincidental list that fans prayed for his downfall since day one. And he became the biggest, most successful boxer in the sport of boxing and that's of course Floyd Mayweather I think HBO they realize they really screwed up and dropped the ball when they let Floyd Mayweather go to H uh, to Showtime and I think HBO is starting to also come to the realization that Gennady Golovkin is on his way out basically and when I say on his way out that means they're thinking after watching Golovkin get stopped by Andre Ward, after watching Chocolatito get knocked out, they're starting to think there's a very good chance that Jamal Charlo, Demetrius Andre, Danny Jacobs, one of these guys, if not more than one of them, is going to beat Gennady Golovkin. And HBO, they finally said, you know what? We better be there to capitalize when that one fighter does beat him. Because they were there to capitalize when Floyd Mayweather beat Oscar De La Hoya. I think that is exactly how HBO are looking at things right now. If you think about it, financially, that makes all the sense in the world. Right? So, we're going to see, guys. We're going to see if Gennady Golovkin takes the challenge and he fights his mandatory Jamel Charlo anytime soon. If he does, I would give Golovkin a lot of credit, even though it's his mandatory and he's supposed to fight him. But if he takes that fight, I would give Golovkin a lot of credit because that is an uphill battle. And I don't see Golovkin winning that fight at all. And I think deep down, Abel Sanchez even realizes how dangerous of a fight that would be for his charge, Golovkin. Because before Jamal moved up to 150 uh, to 160, when I used to interview Abel Sanchez and we would talk about fighters at 154, Abel Sanchez would praise the Charlo twins all the time. So I can only imagine what he thinks about him 
deep down now when it, it when it comes to him being a threat to his own fighter, Golovkin. So things are going to get really interesting. Let's see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Let's see what type of announcement, because that's something else uh, Tom Loeffler said, is they're about to make a big announcement. Let's see what the announcement is. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.